everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your standard HasLab acrylic tube into this acrylic tube. This mod is 100% DIY. We will be making the acrylic tube with the bevel edges. So the first thing we're going to need to do is buy this acrylic tube. It's about 18 inches long, 22 millimeter outside diameter, 16 millimeter inside diameter. I got an 18 inch one for about 13, 14 dollars Canadian. So I'm not sure what that is in America, maybe $10. Um, and I'll put the link where I got mine in the description, but I'm sure it won't be hard for you guys to find one. Just make sure you get the right diameter. Before I continue, I just want to let you know, I got this idea from someone on gbfans.com. I'll post the link in the description. Here he showed a really cool cost effective way to make this yourself. You don't need like a sanding belt or anything, anything special. Um, that's what drew me my attention to it and I really like this method and I just want to share his method with you guys. Some of the tools you're gonna to need is a funnel, some sandpaper, um, the one I'm using here just so happens to be 80 grit, and a wooden dowel. Now the funnel I got here was too big. As you can see when I go in, it's, it almost pushes right through. So you wanna make sure you get the right size, something smaller than this. I was going to head back out and buy a proper one where I just realized, wait a minute, I have a 3D printer. So why don't I just 3D print one? And so that's what I did here. What you wanna do is take this sandpaper, and as you can see there, I've already glued a sandpaper into here. So you're gonna to wanna to cut a circle. And if it's okay with you guys, I don't wanna do that, waste that right now. So I'm just gonna demonstrate on a piece of paper. And then, now I'm gonna be honest, I did not, I'm not sh exactly sure how much to cut inwards, but you're gonna to have to cut out a slit because we're gonna to need to curl it like this so that it can fit into the funnel like that. So I'm just gonna cut the line and then test it out. Do something like this, so, and then we're gonna need a hole. Okay, if anyone has a better idea of how to do this, I'm sorry that this looks, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try, cut out a little piece of, piece of slice there. That's about the right size, except I just need the hole here. I'm probably doing this wrong, I'm not gonna lie. But I, I don't know, I just I just went with it. And so I'm just gonna hold it like that and I'm just gonna cut off a little bit of a hole here. And then that should be enough to fit a wooden dowel through. So next you're gonna wanna take your funnel and you're gonna use some super glue. Then you just wanna take your super glue and you're just gonna put some super glue on the edge in there. Just make sure it's nice and thin. You don't want it bumpy or anything because we want this smooth. And then you're just gonna glue your sandpaper down to it. And then when you're done and you stick in the wooden dowel, it should look something like this. Next, and this is optional, you can take a screwdriver and you can stick in your wooden dowel and then take your acrylic tube, stick that in. And then while you're holding it straight, just go at it. Personally, when I tried this method, it wasn't working out well for me. The wooden dowel either wouldn't spin well or it would make a, like a screechy noise when I was doing it. And I just went ahead and went with the old fashioned method and just used my hands. So I'm gonna demonstrate it on this other one that I ruined. I was really heartbroken about this. So you just go ahead and twist. That's all you do. The wooden dowel helps to keep it straight. Every once in a while, you can go ahead and clear this into a garbage can and then just continue. Just twist and twist and twist and twist and twist. And you're gonna to wanna to keep going until you get a nice beveled edge like that. If you're curious, this one that I have here, it's about 3.9 millimeters. So roughly four millimeters uh, deep. And that's how that looks. So putting the acrylic tube aside for now, we're gonna to need to get into the barrel. If you're watching this video and you haven't opened up your wand before, done any mods, um, you know, installed a GP Star Kit, which I have in here, um, go back to my install video for the main GP Star Kit. And I, I show, I walk you through exactly how to get into the wand here. I have the link posted with the timestamp in the description. So check that out first if you don't know how to get inside the wand here. Once again, this is the GP Star HasLab Proton Pack uh, mod that I have installed here. But for the purpose of this video, it doesn't matter. 
what yours looks like in this section here. We're just gonna be focused on this part right here. So next, we're gonna need to remove this spring here. So you can go ahead and just pry that off. Push that aside and we're gonna need to remove the screw underneath it. Then with that removed, you can go ahead and lift this up and off. And you might also notice that um, my fake wire is missing here. I've already removed mine. I'm just preparing for a different mod and my LED wires are broken. So yours will probably be still attached, which is fine. Don't worry about it. Sorry, I forgot to mention that it will actually be easier if you disconnect this LED first. So it's actually connected to this three pin connector. These are very tight on the board. It's really hard to take off. I recommend grabbing pliers and grab it by the head and disconnect that way. Do not pull on the wires to disconnect. You do not want to rip these off and break them. If you want a video demonstration, again, refer back to my main GP Star Kit installation video where I show you how to do it. And likewise, you should take off um, this connector here. It's a two pin white connector. This belongs to the button, the hat light button. Moving forward to this section here, we're gonna have to remove this fake uh, emitter tip and I just found that you can just rip it off. Some of you might have it really glued on and that's gonna be a pain. Then moving back here, slide this out and then slide this out. Now for the next step, there's a pin in here that we need to poke out. Look closely, you can see the outline of a circle and that's where the pin is. Flipping it over, you can see that right there as well. So you need, you need to take a drill or something just to remove the little plastic here so you get access to the pin. I'm just gonna try it with my screwdriver. Yeah, so this little screwdriver I have here does the job. All right, and once you've got a hole on both sides, all you really gotta do is push it out like that. If it's really stuck in there like mine is, we can try poking it through the other way. Yeah, the other way works. Sorry, I forgot to mention. On one side, you can see it's kind of, what's the, what's the word, knurled, curled? Knurled. One side of it is knurled at the end here. So yeah, so you're gonna wanna poke it through the other side. So this knurled side is a C. This is on the right, it's facing up. So you wanna poke it through that way and then this should come out a lot easier. And once that is off, you can just simply take this off now. And then we're just gonna work on this piece. So now that you got this piece here, ignore the silver paint. That's just something I did when I first got the wand and take your acrylic piece here and again, pretending that this is one long piece because you haven't cut yours yet. But yeah, you wanna try to just match it up and then you wanna mark exactly where to cut and where it meets up with this piece here. And then how to cut these is you can just use a saw if you have one or Dremel. The whole idea is to make sure you wanna get it nice and straight as best as you can. I got one of these, it's a tube cutter. How that works is you just stick, stick it in there and then line up the blade right there with the line and then you tighten as much as you can, and then you just twist it. And in theory, it should create a nice straight line, but I do notice that when I was twisting it, the line didn't go straight across and it starts spiraling. And then the more I twist, it just kept making a line a spiral downwards. So when you're doing this to begin with, if you're using this method, go slow and make sure that the line meets up all the way around. So wherever you start cutting, do a full circle and make sure that it matches up. And then do that again and again for the first few turns until it's deep enough that it's not gonna spiral and draw the line elsewhere. And then after that, just keep tightening and keep twisting, twisting, twisting until eventually it pops off like that. So next, we're just gonna have to cut off the old one. And once again, just saw it off, take a Dremel or use this thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going slow just to make sure that I'm cutting exactly along that line and then tightening it 
and then just going ham when I feel that's good enough. And there you go. And then moving back to the acrylic tube, as you can see, I already taped it up and I already scuffed it up. Um, how I did this is you take a piece of paper and you roll it up, making sure it's, it meets up nice and flush here. Put a piece of tape around it like that. And then I just stick it in and to wherever I want. And then I put a piece of tape around it. So for example, the bottom here, I went up to here and then I, I taped it right there. And then I did the same to this side. And then same thing here, do this side, go in the other way if you need to, until you have it all taped up like that. I don't know the official length of um, the scuffed up areas. I just eyeballed it uh, looking at some reference photos. And once you've done that, you just literally take some sandpaper and you just sand it. Then you can just remove the tape once you're done. Next, before we glue these together, just to make sure that it's absolutely straight, we're gonna put this back on first. So that just slides on. And then it only fits in one way with the holes facing this way and this way. As you see, you can't twist anymore. So you know you're good when it's in there like that. And make sure your LED is lined up properly. So I believe this is the top and this is the bottom and this side's the top. So the LED should try to line up just like that. And we're gonna dab the super glue along the edge here. Do not put it on here first. If you put it on here first and you try to slide it in, you're gonna get glue that slides up on the inside and you're gonna ruin it. And yes, I am speaking from experience. So do not do that. You do not wanna waste all that good effort of beveling your acrylic tube and sanding it just to ruin it in the last step. So again, we're gonna just put glue along the edge here first. And then go ahead and slide that in. And no fancy trick to this part. You're just gonna hold that tightly until the glue settles. Okay, and that's it. And once you're done there and you're satisfied with this being glued on tightly, let's go ahead and reassemble this. So starting with this, let's put this back in with the neural side. I believe it was facing shoot, this way, yeah. So with this piece here and this piece facing left, the neural side goes in like that. So make sure it's nice and flush, not sticking on anymore. Push it in just a little bit more. Yep, that looks good. It's not sticking out from other side. And if you haven't already, remove the tape. Now because this barrel is wider than the stock Hasbro wand, we're gonna to need to widen the inner part of this front piece here. To do that, you can use a Dremel, or what I found is sandpaper works just fine. You actually don't need to remove that much. And this fits in nice and easy now. So with that done, we're gonna continue reassembling this. Take the inner barrel, put that in there like that. Stick in the quick tube. And as you see, this is the bottom of the barrel. So you wanna line it up with the spring facing this way. And to reseat this, you wanna make sure these holes line up the two posts here. And that this part here is inside this little groove right here. And then take your screw here and reinstall that. Reattach the spring. Double check that this still flows well. Yeah, and that's it for this part. Now you can go ahead and reattach the connectors, the three pin and the two pin here, connect it back to your board. And once you're done that, just go ahead and close it up. And once you finish closing everything back up, all that's left is the emitter tip end here. There's no trick to it. All you gotta do is just cut off the tip here. Just keep, I think some scissors will do and then until it looks like this. And because this is a rubber piece, it can stretch and fit around the new tube here. But because it, it will stretch and have a little bit of a stretch look, you can sand the inside a little bit so to reduce a little bit of that. However, do not sand too much. And here is why. With mine, it may seem like it has a nice grippy friction fit to it. However, it is deceiving. So if you look here, I have the 
the ring right up to the end of the barrel. And when I extend it, push it back down, it's moved up a bit. And do it again. Moved up a little bit more. So it's actually not as tight as you think. So do not sand too much if you're gonna still use this existing one. If you plan to replace the emitter tip, the banjos and cables completely, this screw here is a fake one and it's actually being held on the inside. The cleanest way to remove that would be split the barrel in half, which is not what I wanna do. I also do not recommend trying to drill into this. I did hurt myself doing that. This thing is still pretty tough. Another method I found on form is that if you heat up this fake screw, you can just, it'll just come right off. So I'm just gonna apply a soldering iron to it and see how it goes. Oops, wow, that actually worked. That's, that's probably the easiest way to do this. Nice and clean, I, I like that method. Thank you for whoever figured that out. And then from there, just install whatever customs, banjos and emir tip that you, you have. Anyways, that's it. I'm sure the rest you can do on your own. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.